everybody. So today on the channel we are going to go through everything that I bought at Powell's this last weekend. I was in Portland. So if you didn't figure that out from reading the title of the video, that's what we're doing. If you have never been to my channel before, I'm Evan and I am so glad that you're here. And if you're returning, welcome back. Um, so I was in Portland on Saturday and one of the things on the top of my to-do list was go to Powell's. So if you don't know what Powell's is, it's basically an entire city block of a bookstore. So it is a thousand stories high. I really think it's actually only four or five. Uh, but it's basically just a maze of books, floor to ceiling shelves, and the new books and the used books are all kind of mixed in together in the stacks. Um, they do have separate tables, obviously, um, for new releases. One of my favorite tables was the new books for used prices. I found two books on there that I've really been wanting to read and I got them for a great price. Everything else I bought was used because I just like reading used books because I go through books so quickly. Um, I don't know, it's like an environmental thing. My nod to trying to be green. Uh, but let's just dive in to this giant bag. I did go kind of overboard, but it's Portland, there was no sales tax, and like I said, I got great prices on all of these books, so I kind of loaded up for the summer months because I'll be traveling, and what do you do when you travel? You read! So the first book I got is um, Emma by Alexander McCall Smith. This is a modern retelling of Jane Austen's story, Emma. Um, I have heard really good things about this. The hardback copy was actually cheaper than the paperback copy, so I went ahead and got it. Also, the paperback copy they had was really, the pages were really stiff, and I was afraid that it was going to break the spine, and that is like, whew, one of my triggers. So I got this copy. Um, I think this will be a really quick read. So basically it's a story about a woman named Emma Woodhouse who returns home to the village of her her family um, ready to launch an interior design business. So I love interior design. I actually thought about going to school to be an interior designer. Um, I love Jane Austen and so I'm really excited to read this retelling. One of the books that I got off of that shelf, um, the new books for used prices, was The Zookeeper's Wife. This is a war story. I believe it's a historical fiction, um, but of events that actually happened. So basically this is a story about World War II and a Polish family owns a zoo zoo and after it is bombed they get to use the cages and all of the uh, zoo equipment to hide refugees from the Nazis. So they are not locking people up in the cages, that sounded really bad, um, but actually they're using their, facil their zoo facilities to help save people from, I'm assuming, the Nazi camps, um, from the Nazis in general. Uh, I just really am excited to read this. It has been on my wish list for a very long time, and it was only $7.98 because it was on that special little table. I also picked up the second book in the uh, Tatiana and Alexander Bronze Horseman trilogy. Uh, I recently read the first one of these. This is such a long book. All of them are really long. I think this one is actually shorter uh, than the first one. It is 559 pages. So uh, obviously I want to finish this trilogy. I was like so-so on it, but I've heard such great things that I figured I should just go ahead and finish it. Um, so this one was also a used copy, um, but it's in great condition and the spine is intact. That is something that I always look for um, when I'm buying used books. And there aren't any markings in it. That also drives me crazy. I'm not one to write in books and I don't like buying books that have stuff written in them. So I am definitely going to give this a shot during the summer. Uh, maybe keep it as like a pool book. Keeping in the same like historical fiction realm, I'm actually really enjoying historical fiction. I'm currently reading a book called Via America, Villa America, uh, that I have been loving and it should be up on the blog maybe next week. Depending on how much I get to read this weekend, it's been so busy that I have not had time to finish it. Um, but the next book I found was City of Thieves by David Bene Benioff, and it takes place during the Siege of Leningrad, which if you've read the first one of this, you will know all about. So basically these, these two guys are prisoners and they are asked to go out and find a dozen eggs just 12 eggs for the colonel's wedding cake. However, during the Siege of Leningrad, there was a shortage of everything. Um, everyone was on rations and getting eggs is 
nearly impossible. Um, also, it's in like the dead of winter. Apparently, it's kind of a comedy. Um, I heard about this from um, a booktuber um, whose channel I watch pretty often, and it's a pretty short book. I, I really wanted to add this to my shelf. Like I said, subject matter I'm interested in and it should be kind of funny. So this next book a lot of people have talked about for a very, very long time. Um, it's Beautiful Ruins by Jess Walter. I have wanted to read this also. It has been on my wish list. Um, I keep an Amazon wish list. It's privated um, on my uh, Amazon account, so whenever I go into bookstores I can kind of scroll through things um, and just have a massive list of everything that I want to read. It kind of helps me when I'm buying books so I don't overspend and I don't go too crazy in the bookstore. And actually everything in my stacks were on that list, so I kind of got to go through and delete a bunch of stuff, which felt great. Um, and I was in San Francisco at Books Inc. not too long ago, and I saw this on one of their shelves, and I loved the cover. It's much smaller than the original book, and I don't know, I just really like this cover a lot better. It has this really, really pretty striped spine, uh, and I love this blue color. Apparently it's a limited edition, but actually I think it ended up being cheaper than the real cover. Um, but this will be great for throwing in my bag while I'm traveling. Um, it's not too big, and the story is supposed to be absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. So I didn't buy it in San Francisco because I knew that I was going to Powell's and I kind of took a gamble but they had one copy of this version and so I grabbed it and it was only uh, $10. So I'm very excited to read this. Definitely going to be a traveling book this summer because it is the perfect little size. So another book that has had a lot of hype that I have really wanted to read and stumbled upon it on the new um, for used prices shelf uh, is The Enchanted by Renee Denfield. Uh, I love this cover. I think the hardback was maybe red, um, but I really, really like this charcoal gray. The gold foil is absolutely beautiful, and it has like these cool end flaps, which I like because then if I forget a bookmark, it's not the end of the world. This is kind of like a crime and fantasy novel. Uh, I don't read a whole lot of fantasy, but I've heard such great things about this. I've heard that it's a beautiful story, and I've heard the writing is just absolutely amazing, so I am really excited. Also, not a very long book, but I do have a Goodreads challenge going on and I have a Goodreads profile if you'd like to follow along I will link that down below um, but I want to read 30 books this year which doesn't sound like a lot but with a full-time job and the blog getting some time to read is sometimes a little difficult so I tried to find books that I really wanted to read but that were too long so I could catch up because I think I'm like four books behind already and hopefully the summer months will help me catch back up. So the next book I got is a little worse for wear. It is a little beaten up, but it is My Misspent Youth by Megan Dom. Um, I heard about these from a booktuber or from a blog, but this is just a book of essays um, by Megan about um, how she lived her early 20s, worrying about money and career, and I'm kind of in that early 20s place. I'm 23, and so I kind of just wanted to give this one a try. I haven't really explored much of her writing. Um, I love essays, and I love essays about women, and um, basically just struggling through your early 20s because it is really demanding, and um, we're all coming out of college, and not really knowing what to do and trying to find jobs and I think this book will be really really interesting so I'm really excited to dive into this also a shorter book um, this one was 850 they had a ton of her stuff and I do also want to read her other book um, some of her other essays and some of her uh, New Yorker articles so I'm gonna do some googling and try and find some of those New Yorker articles that I can read on the internet so I'm really excited about this. And then this one is no surprise because if you follow my channel for a while or my blog, you will know that I am obsessed with these Tana French, um, the Dublin Murder Squad series, I think is what it's called. I always get the order of that off. Um, but this one is the third book in the series, um, The Faithful Place. It follows one of the characters, Frank Mackey, who is not my favorite character, and I've heard that complaint from a few people, um, but I'm definitely going to give this one a shot anyway, because I'm hoping some of the characters that I do love will reappear in this novel. These books are great mysteries, um, thrillers, a lot of psychology goes into writing them, and I'm not by any means um, a psychologist or have any psychology training at all, but I find it really interesting. I'm definitely excited to read this one. I kind of took a break. I read the first and the second one back to back, 
Um, and then I wanted to read some of the other stuff on my shelves. It was one of my New Year's resolutions for reading, was to try and read some stuff that I already owned. So instead of going out and buying the third one immediately, I put them down, which was really hard, and read some other stuff. But since I was at Powell's, I broke that rule of not buying too many books this year and went ahead and got this one. So actually two of the books I bought were to complete some series or add on to series, I guess, because neither one of these are completed. And I think there are five of these with maybe a sixth one coming out later this year. And the last book I bought, which is kind of a massive book, um, but it's Secrets of the Flesh, A Life of Colette. So this is just basically a biography about um, a woman named Colette. She was a writer and her husband stole quite a bit of her writings as his own. It's a true story and um, Colette got herself into some unusual predicaments, especially for the time period that she was living in, but she's a really interesting woman that I have been interested in reading about for quite a while. I don't want to spoil too much of it for you, but I heard that this is the best story about her um, that's out there, and so I definitely wanted to grab this one. It was $6.95, and this is a giant book, so it's going to take me a while to finish. I wanted to read a lot more books about uh, strong women figures in history this year, or in modern history, um, so essays and things like this are on my reading list, um, top of my reading list, so I think I'll probably read this alongside some of these other shorter books because like I said, it's going to take me a while to finish this one. But it does have quite a few pictures in it. Um, here's a picture of Colette in drag in 1910. Another picture of her working out on her portable gym. So she's just kind of a really interesting woman. Um, and I'm excited to read this and learn more about her. So probably one of my favorite things that I got um, on my pals trip is not actually like a book to read. Um, but it was from the Rare Book Room. And if you're a book lover like I am, uh, definitely recommend you go up there. I think it's on the fourth floor, but by that point I was so turned around in this massive bookstore that I could be completely wrong. You have to go to the counter and get like a little tag and you have to leave everything that you've brought with you, um, books, drinks. I had a coffee while I was running around the books because you definitely need some refreshments to tackle this bookstore. Um, so you just leave all of that outside on a shelf and you go in. And not all of the books are crazy expensive. I thought I was gonna go in there and like fall in love with something that was like a $400 rare book and have to leave it behind because don't get the money for a $400 book. And to my surprise, a lot of the stuff in there was not too overpriced. There were definitely a few things that were like in the $1,000 range. Uh, $2,500 I think, uh, but they were giant like Toshin photo books. There are some really cool, very rare copies of children's books, and if you appreciate just beautiful books, I would go in and just check it out, have a quick experience, and then get back to the books um, that you actually plan on reading. But while we were in there, we stumbled upon um, a little magazine rack that had this. It's the best of the Bomb Bugle, 1963-1964, um, and I have collected uh, Wizard of Oz books for as long as I can remember. I have five or six copies up there and I have probably five or six other copies at my parents house in Texas so I have always loved The Wizard of Oz um, it's one of my favorite books it's one of my favorite movies if you've never read it um, definitely give it a chance it's a children's book you can read it probably in a day um, but I saw this and I have never heard of the Bomb Bugle. Obviously I'm not like an obsessive collector. I don't know all the ins and outs of the memorabilia and the prices of the books. I just love the story um, and it kind of reminds me of there's a movie and it's like How I Met Your Mother but in movie form and I will put a picture of it here on the screen because I can't for the life of me remember what it's called. And the female character in the movie has a copy of a book um, that her father signed for her for a birthday. I think it was her father. Obviously I have not seen this movie in a very long time and I'll probably watch it this weekend to jog my memory. Um, but that book was lost to a resale shop, a used bookstore, and so she's been spending her life going into used bookstores and buying copies of that book and she has an entire shelf. Some of them have notes from loved ones inside, uh, obviously to other people, and some of them are just really pretty copies of the book, but that's kind of how I feel about Wizard of Oz. I love going into used bookstores and I love finding um, really pretty copies of the book. I got a beautiful pop-up um, Wizard of Oz book for Christmas 
four or five years ago. It was from Barnes & Noble. It was not vintage. It wasn't used. Um, but it was just really gorgeous. So I wanted to add this to my shelf. I wanted to flip through it and kind of see um, what the Bomb Bugle was all about. I just wanted to see um, what this had to offer and add it to all of my other Wizard of Oz. I keep looking up at them, but all of my other Wizard of Oz stuff. I will leave links to all of these books down below. I am really excited to kind of dive into them. I want to do a summer reading video. I did one last year and you guys seem to like it. Um, however, I'm afraid that a lot of these books will be in that one so it'll be like a repeat video uh, but I'll try and find some other stuff that I want to read too and make that video. Like I said I'm excited to read all of these. I'm going to have to find another shelf in my house to store them all on because I'm running out of room on this one and I think we actually need to get another bookshelf. Let me know in the comments um, if you're excited to read any of these books. If you've read any of these books I'd love to hear what you thought. Make sure you check out my blog. Click the library tab. I'll put a card somewhere on the screen so that you can just click over there um, and you can go through all of the books that I read. I review them all and then I post that review also on Goodreads so you can find them in either place but I recommend checking out the blog anyway. Don't forget to follow me on my social medias. Those are down below. Um, I'm on interest at interest. I'm on Instagram and Twitter and I post there quite a bit so you guys can follow along with what I'm doing my day to day in between blog posts. My posting has been pretty sporadic this last two weeks because I've been out of town um, basically for two weeks straight. So forgive me, uh, next Monday I'm going to get right back on track and be posting every day as usual. But like I said, forgive me. We're going to get back on track and everything's going to be good. So I will see you in my next video very, very soon. And I love you lots. Bye.